Hi there friends, it's Mark here. I'm spending the day today working on my latest product which is advanced LinkedIn training and whilst I was working on the section on groups I just it came to me that I could perhaps do uh, some thoughts that might help all of you and in particular Steve Trister who uh, something I meant to mention yesterday and, uh, and really this, uh, this came off the back of when I shared my success with webinars, I, I gave the, uh, I suggested that with 48, hour, 48 hours notice, you can create and run a very successful webinar. And I might have sounded a little bit glib with that because Peter quite rightly said you need to have, as well as great systems, a great list. And I certainly agree with that. What I've found over the last uh, 18 months since I've been focusing on L LinkedIn is that I've managed to build up my own personal list of several thousand people. Quite aside from my the email list that we have at work, so I thought I'd just share with you. I think some thoughts here uh, how to get lists really, really quickly. And I'm focusing on on LinkedIn because I'm in the business to uh, business marketplace. If you're in uh, business to consumer, then you may find that Facebook's better for doing this. So just some thoughts on lists. Firstly, my thoughts on, on LinkedIn is that LinkedIn, your lists within LinkedIn are the best lists you can have. And the reason for that is that they're, con they're always up to date. Unlike an email list that you might buy in or even create your own builder, over time that becomes out of date because people change their email addresses, perhaps people st sell their businesses and so on. But with LinkedIn, people are always keeping their own details fully up to date. So your list is a completely up to date list of people. So LinkedIn is a great way of building lists and there's lots of ways of doing that and one of the most powerful things you can do is to focus on groups and make sure that you are in as many groups as possible. LinkedIn allows you to be part of 50 groups and I would make sure that you're in groups that contain your target audience. So in my case, I work with accountants and I make sure I'm in several groups of other accountants because that's how I, that, that they're my lists. So how do you do that? Well, what you want to do is, is first of all, do some research, do, do some searching. So, so I'm going to use uh, Steve here as my example. And if you're already doing this, Steve, then forgive me, this may not be of use to you, but hopefully it is. So if I was looking to target and do training for people who are aspiring to be professional speakers, I would go into the search box, select groups, and I would type in professional speaker. Click on the search box icon here and this will pull up all the groups that uh, focus on special professional speakers and if we look through here we can see there's some pretty big groups for example this one professional speakers and seminars there's 12,616 members of this particular group here if we work our way down here we can see there's 9,000 members of this particular group uh, what we can also see is with with this one so it's a it's a closed group so it may be that they won't accept you automatically into it whereas the open groups you can just become a member very very quickly so it's worth doing some research typing in something into the into the box here for the types of target market you're looking for so if you are looking to to, to work with professional speakers then type that in and search through search through the list for groups that will look like they'll contain your target market market and join as many as possible and I would focus on joining those that have the biggest the biggest groups because they're the they're the ones where you're going to get the most the, the, the best results so once you've found your groups some groups with your target market in there then of course you want to join join them and and join as many as possible focusing on those that are most relevant and the largest the largest groups Next, what do you do? Well, you need to be aware of the etiquette with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is essentially networking. And one of the things you need to make sure that you do, just like, as a, just like in a live networking event, you want to make sure that to, to build, you want to build your credibility, build your reputation. You do that by helping other people. What you mustn't use LinkedIn to do is to blatantly sell stuff. Because just like with a live a networking event people avoid those people that are out there just to sell what to sell you've got to show an interest in other people you've got to help other people so that's how you use LinkedIn you don't use LinkedIn for the selling so here's some thoughts what you want to do is once you've joined your groups you need to be regularly contributing to those groups and I would suggest that you're looking to contribute at least once a month but ideally once a week and I would put aside one or two hours systematically every week perhaps last thing on a Friday an hour just posting some things there's two things you can do here there's firstly you can post your own discussions and I'll give you some rules on how you do that effectively and secondly you can comment on other people's discussions 
let me just go across to one of the groups that I'm in, and I'll choose my one of my own groups, AVN Changing the Numbers. And subject to the, the settings you've set up in, in LinkedIn, and if you've not played with, played with the settings, this will be the default anyway, you will get an email, just like everybody else in the group, will get an email when there's new discussions. They'll show the new discussions and also the most popular discussion. And what I do is I look through those emails for popular discussions. Because here, here's the thing with the, the popular discussions. So let me just look one for this, that's fairly popular in my own group. And if I scan down, scroll up to the bottom, you'll see this particular discussion had 25 comments. Now this is my own particular group and it's not, not got a huge number of members, it's about five or six hundred. But if you're in groups that have got five, ten, twenty thousand members, you'll find that some of the comments, will ha some of the discussions will have fifty, a hundred, even more comments. Now here's the interesting thing about discussions and comments. Let's just scroll down to the bottom. When someone adds a comment to a discussion, most people are completely oblivious of this tick box here. And so most people leave it. The default situation is it says, send me an email for each new comment. Now what that means is if you find a discussion that's taking place that's had, in this case, 25 comments, but it could be 50, it could be 100, and if you feel that you can contribute to that discussion, then you should definitely do that because what happens if you contribute to a discussion that's been going for some time, it's got lots of comments, because all of those people who have made comments up to that point of time, in time, they'll probably not have noticed this and won't have unchecked it. And that means when you add a comment to an already popular discussion, all of those people that have already contributed to that particular discussion will get an email notifying them of the message you've put in there, the update you've put in there. So keep an eye open for discussions that are already taking place that A, you can add some value and comment on, and B, they're already very popular because you've got an opportunity to get an email via LinkedIn to go to every single one of those people who has already contributed to that discussion because of the fact that they will not have unchecked this box here. So once a day when I'm clearing out my emails, I always look for the emails that have come through from the groups that I'm in, and I'll look through those for popular discussions, the most popular discussions. I'll look for ones, and if I think I can add some value to those, and if it's, it's a lively discussion going on, I'll always do that. The second thing that you want to do is also create your own discussions in groups. Now here's some rules that, that I found work really, really well with discussions. When you create discussions, what you want to do is, is firstly, have think about the headline. The headlines are really, really important. You want to intrigue people. You want people to read the discussions. And some of the larger groups, you can find when you get the emails come through, some of the larger groups have sometimes 20, 30 updates of new discussions taking place. So you need to make sure yours stand out. Now, what I found with this particular one, for example, I put the heading AVN members only. And what I found is a huge number of non-members, my potential, my prospects, looked at this and commented on it because they thought they were getting access to something that's only for members. So that, that certainly worked for what I was trying to achieve with this particular posting. So think about your headlines. Your headlines are really, really important. You want to make sure they, they intrigue people and what make people want to read on. The second thing that's really important with your postings is make sure that you have valuable content. It goes back to the etiquette. Don't try and sell stuff within LinkedIn. Make sure you're always adding value. Every single post that you put, whether it's your own brand new discussion or whether you're contributing to somebody else's discussion, make sure you put something there of genuine value because you want to build a reputation up as being somebody that wants to help that particular target marketplace. So it could be professional speakers. Make sure you don't sell within LinkedIn itself. Also within your discussions, make sure that you put in there something that's going to generate a conversation. So if you can build in a question somewhere, something like, we'd love to get your thoughts and feedback, as I've put in this particular one, because you want to encourage people to comment. And so sometimes having something that's got some controversy can work really, really well. In the accounting profession, one of the things that's quite, that gets people account accountants excited is keeping timesheets, which I think is a crazy idea, but most accountants are wedded to their timesheets. So when you create controversial discussions around should accountants keep timesheets or not, you can guarantee that you'll get 
a huge number of comments taking place. So try and be a little bit controversial sometimes because that helps to stimulate discussions. The next thing that I found works really, really well, and I do it with nearly all of my postings, I always then have a link through to something else. It could be a link to your blog. If you're doing videos on YouTube, you could link it through to YouTube. So I, what I do is I regularly link people through to the YouTube video it's, itself. And then what I do is I make sure that in that video, I'm again adding masses of content. So I try to make my, generally my LinkedIn postings are quite short and to the point because I drive them to a YouTube channel and a particular video and give massive amounts of value. The advantage of driving people to your YouTube channel or to your blog, for example, is you can still add mass amounts of value, but once they're out of the LinkedIn, LinkedIn environment, then you can start to also sell them on something. So if I do a video, then I will add massive value in the video, but I'll have a call to action at the end of it, which could be to get my free gift. It could be to, to, to um, buy a product or whatever. So I never do the selling in LinkedIn itself, but I do the selling perhaps somewhere else, like on my, on my YouTube channel, on blogs, on the website. So that's how you do, that's how you get people to do a call to action in LinkedIn. Add massive value with LinkedIn, but think about driving them to somewhere else where they can get even more value, a video for example, and then that's a more appropriate place to then have a call to action. The other thing that's great to do with LinkedIn is give something away for free. The more you can come back to adding value, if you can give something for free, you're going to get a build, get this reputation of being someone who wants to help. So if you have a golden carrot, for example, then create some LinkedIn discussions, which at the end of it said, you might say, if you'd like a free copy of my book, just go here. So that always works really, really well. And of course, by doing that, you'll then, on your lead page, capture email addresses. And once you've got their email address, you've then got permission to then tell them more stuff and put them through your autoresponder process. And if you're looking to run webinars, I'm finding webinars incredibly successful. So what I do is I offer free webinars via LinkedIn group discussions. And of course, then once you've got people on the webinars, that's when you can then do your selling, as long as you first and foremost add massive value in the webinar itself. Now, a quick thought about offering webinars on LinkedIn groups. If I'm posting it on my own groups, like this particular one, AVN Change Numbers, then it will be very blatant. It will be uh, a, a promotion for a webinar, albeit free, and it may well say free webinar or new webinar in the title. If you're posting on other people's groups, and it's blatantly about a free webinar, very often, not always, but some groups are quite keen on looking at discussions and will move it to promotions. So what I do when I promote webinars, I'll create my marketing material, my LinkedIn marketing material, and I'll have two different messages. I'll have the message that I promote through my own groups, which is very much about this is a free webinar, click here to join the webinar. But if I post it on other people's groups, the focus of the message is about adding value. So I'll give away two or three really valuable points that is something I'll cover on the webinar. And then almost a throwaway line at the end, I'll then say, if you find this value, you want to find some more ideas about this particular topic, then just click here. And then I would use that to drive people to either the webinar registration page or what I do in LinkedIn, I would, I would rather have a LinkedIn event which I can set up and, I can, and, and that's a subject for another day, but I drive traffic to LinkedIn events first and then use the events page to drive people to the registration page. By making sure that the posting has some real value and then just says something like, click here to find out more about this particular, about, about this idea, usually I find the owners of the groups don't see that as a promotion and it doesn't get moved to the promotions, it goes into discussions. So if your target market, for example, is getting access to professional speakers and doing training for professional speakers, join the groups, join the big groups like this one, which has got 12,616. And then if you want to promote a webinar, then send a discussion group, send it to, through, to each of those groups, but make sure it's not coming across as a blatant promotion. Make sure that you first and foremost add value, give some great advice in the LinkedIn discussion itself and then drive people, have a link to drive them somewhere else where they can register for the webinar or it may be a LinkedIn events page. And here's another quick idea for you. Whenever I post messages on other people's LinkedIn groups or even my own group, whenever I post discussions, I create the message in a Word document. So I have a standard Word document called LinkedIn group postings which sits on my desktop and I open, I access this 
on a regular basis, you'll see that there's, th there's 13 pages of, of various discussions. And what I do at the top of it, I have a list of all the groups that I'm in. So I'm my marketplace is accountants. And then what I do is I would then put in, I would type the list, the, the, the discussion itself. So this one was back in on the 10th of July. What's the, here's the headline. Uh, and then here's the, the message with driving people, in this, in this case, to a, a YouTube video. And then what I do, what I found works really, really well to extend the longevity of the message rather than posting that all on the same day to every single group, I stagger it. So what I'll do is on, I'll stagger over the course of a week. So if, I, if this is the message I want to send out this week, then on the Monday I'll spend about two minutes, no more than that, and I'll post this by cutting and pasting it into perhaps four or five of these groups. Then the next morning... And what I'll then do is I'll colour code it. I will then highlight, and if I post it, um, I might decide this one's going to be um, this one's going to be a, a, a brown discussion. And once I've posted it on these groups here, I'll then mark it as brown. So I know now when I get to the following day that this discussion here has been posted to these four. On the following day, on the Tuesday, I'll then cut and paste it into the next four on the list, and then I'll. I'll change the colour to brown to notify me that's where I've got to. Sometimes I have more than one colour because I'm working on several different discussions over the course of a week and I'll stagger them. So I'll make sure that I systematically post that discussion across the groups over the course of a week. Now of course you could use something like Hootsuite to do this but the other advantage of doing a document like this and something I've started doing is if you created a great, some great discussions and they've linked to something like a YouTube video and that's something that's timeless, then why not a year down the line just start to repeat the process? So this is what I've done. I've gone back to my original LinkedIn pro postings and rather than creating, creating brand new videos, creating brand new content, I'm just recycling it because a year later it'll be a different audience, different people will read the postings. So by having a list, by having a list of all of the postings that you've made on LinkedIn, you can reuse them over and over again.